Hi guys and girls, how are you going again? Mark Hummer here. Uh, just recently we've been talking about all sorts of stabilisation systems, even camera bags. But uh, today I thought I'd talk about lighting. It's one of the key and most important parts of any filmmaking or photography. After all, you know, for photography is just capturing light, isn't it? So without the right lighting you're going to really struggle. And you know, when most people think about lighting in a camera, they pick up the camera and they probably think about the pop-up flash. Uh, it's the most immediate thing you would uh, imagine because it comes with the camera as part of the kit. And when you use it, like it does function, you know, like there we go. You get some lighting from it, but as you saw from that, it's extremely harsh. It's very directional, low down to the lens. And really, the image you sort of get from that is almost like a, a deer stunned in, in headlights of a car. It's never flattering. Usually it startles the person because it's so harsh in the eyes, especially if you're very close to them. And it's not really the ideal thing to use. So, yes, it's functional and it does come free with a camera, but it's not highly recommended for almost any application, except for maybe quite a distance away where you just want to use it as a fill light in three or four metres away. But uh, for most applications, there are options you have that uh, can actually help you out with the pop-up flash. Because uh, not everybody wants to spend a lot of money on lighting, nor is it convenient always to take with you something monstrosity like this giant umbrella with you. So what's cheap and affordable means of helping you out with the lighting just on your DSLR? Well, I have a little item here which I found very amusing. It's called a Gary Fong Puffer Plus. It costs no more than about, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 dollars, depending on where you buy, what country you're in. But it's very light, I mean it weighs next to nothing. And it's just a simple diffuser that you pop onto your camera. What you do is you put it onto the uh, little hot shoe mount there on top just slides in very simply and as you can see by its relative position to the camera when you do pop the flash up it's going to punch through that and diffuse the light so let's have a look at the difference now when I take the shot so I'm sure you get the idea there that what it's going to do is it's going to broaden widen the whole lighting arrangement of it coming out and it'll diffuse it and soften it in a broad area so this is oh, it's most useful for something up to a few meters away if you want to uh, get a fill light coming in but it's certainly not a directional light. Uh, it does soften it, so it can be useful on the fly, as it were. Chuck it in your camera bag, have a small camera bag with you, and it can be a useful backup tool. So that's it's no fault to anyone's design that it's not very effectual. It's just that you've got a very small and intense bright light source, and so this is something that's certainly better than nothing. And I have used it on multiple occasions in a pinch. It's quite functional. But really, what most people are going to want to uh, move up to is something like... Well, I'll illustrate here a speed light. Everybody's seen uh, these, particularly if you're a photojournalist, you've certainly noticed them. They're very handy for giving a strong, bright light. You would have seen them uh, when people are doing magazine shoots, uh, it's press, on uh, Channel 7 News or something like that, you would have seen them use them. And they use them predominantly for an intense light in a hurry. They uh, clip right onto your speed light arrangement there. You must lock them on. Please don't forget to do that if you purchase one. These things are worth anything from about three to six hundred dollars, so they're not cheap. You don't want them falling off. If you have them like this and you turn your camera up and down, it can slide off and, and break on the ground. So please just lock them on when you use them. There's a lot of buttons on the back that look intimidating. Really, it's not. The only thing you've got to really worry about initially is turning it on. You see on off. There's also a remote and a master mode, but we'll get into that a little later. Uh, initially, most people would have them facing forward. You see this big diffusy dome, that doesn't actually count, uh, that need to be with it at all times. This is the most intense sort of a light you'll get from it. But again, you're getting back to that directional harsh pop-up light. But for just for illustration purposes, I'm going to run you through it. You have a built-in diffuser dome here, fortunately. So this will soften the light a bit. Uh, if you want to even soften that greater, you can put that cap on, which actually does come with the, when you buy the light that cap does come with it and it will give you a much softer, a broader diffused light again. Because it's a bigger, more powerful unit, instead of a little intense beam of light, you're going to get a big, soft beam of light in all directions. But it is still on camera, it is still following the lens, it's still very one directional. Of course, you have the beauty of these things where they're all rotational. So you see you can bounce it off the walls rather than direct at the subject. You can bounce it off the roof if you like and get a, a reflected light that way. They're all useful ways of using it. However, they're not always ideal, and it's not always as soft as you would like, because sometimes you're bouncing it off a dark surface on top. It's not going to be very effectual. If someone's got walls, and you're bouncing it off the walls, and those walls are painted red, we well, can imagine the orange glow you're going to give everybody. So sometimes that's not reliable on its own. What you can do, I found very, very useful, is this sort of an item here. This is a Rogue-built 
puffer, oh not puffer plus, sorry, it's a rogue built diffuser. And I find this quite fascinating. It just clips onto the top of your speed light, as illustrated here. You can use them on a stand, as I have, but you're just as likely, you can just disengage it from there, if you like. And you can see how it just clips on with a bit of Velcro. So if I can just illustrate that for you. If I pull that apart there, you can see here's your speed light. This is a 710 instead of a, a 700, sorry, instead of a 910. Just a little bit smaller. But here we go, you've got your Rogue Flash Bender, they're called. They come in multiple sizes, like this is the very extra large one. Great for studio use. This is a more modest size one, the medium size, and it just straps on very quickly onto your speed light. So just like a little bit of Velcro and a clip. Must put that little uh, tongue, if you like to call it that, down first. You wrap it all in, and that was just, uh, it's quick and simple to attach it. Tug this down, that just keeps it all flush and flat. And you've really got a portable softbox with you everywhere you go, providing, of course, you have a speed light with you. I find them quite interesting how you can activate them with one light and then you can have this one on the stand, and that can be a directional light source from, you know, a bit to the left or right. And you're giving that sort of directional light while you're activating it with this one in a remote master mode. So that's really cool. So I highly recommend a speed light for anyone. They're versatile. You just whack them in your camera bag just as if it was another lens. And you've got the versatility of these sort of attachments. Uh, this Rogue uh, Flash Bender arrangement, as I say, I use this very, very much. Certainly a lot more useful than the general soft box or umbrella in that it's compact and small it's not affected by the wind a great deal and it's very portable I mean it weighs next to nothing and so the fact that you can attach it directly to your to your speed light here makes it extremely useful I'll just try and attach it now quickly for you just to illustrate how it works again this is the biggest unit but yes it still does work on the uh, speed light so just excuse me while I attach it it does thread through here this needs a little bit more extra securing because it's a larger model you can see here once you've got it on and all attached when you activate your uh, light just make sure everything's turned on there you go and you see you've got a beautiful big soft box light portable wherever you go and you guess you can still use don't think you can't use this for a portrait photo you want to take a portrait photo with that it works just fine and there you're actually adding a little bit of directionality to it it's coming from the side a little bit i've used this a lot for portraits particularly in like function centers or confined spaces where you just can't drag something around on tripods and cables everywhere it's just not convenient but that's an excellent portable unit I think they range from about you know, 75 maybe $100 for the largest and uh, for that sort of money it's, oh, it's a great tool to take with you so that's one recommendation I have for you the next uh, stage up from that would be something like well the softbox really so let me run you through the softbox arrangement The softbox I have here, I'm actually using uh, two of them either side of me to support the lighting right now. They're, look, it's broad daylight, you know, I'm under a shelter, but it's still a lot of daylight coming through. So they're just like a backup system, make sure that there's no unnecessary shadows or dullness. But uh, this, big, this one here is a brilliant little apparatus, they're very inexpensive. People look at a softbox and they think, oh, it's a big professional piece of equipment, it's going to be big money. But I tell you, I've got three here, as I bought as a kit, I bought one that's like an overhead rig, Two of these identical boxes here, they've got five uh, fluoro lights in them, uh, a piece. And for the whole thing, uh, including the stands, I think it was like $150 delivered. And that's for three soft boxes. So they're certainly not expensive, but they are giving you beautiful, soft, and excellent lighting. Just let me run through how they work. On the back of them, they have a whole lot of little buttons. And as you flip the buttons independently, you can choose which light you want on or off. So let me just put these on for you. See, so you've got one, two, three, four, five lights. So you've got quite a lot of strength there. You can have them in any combination or number you wish, depending on your needs and circumstances. But a softbox is a brilliant tool to use, more so for a studio-style arrangement where you're in a, an area that you're fully in control of, where you have power, you've got your 240 volts available, and that way you can run them all the time. The downside of them, apart from the fact that they are a bit of a trip hazard and they're a bit bulky and the wind can blow them over outside, the other issue is the cables and cords. See, if you're in a, like a function centre, you've got a ton of people walking to and fro, even a wedding reception, uh, people can be tripping over them as a hazard and cause themselves quite an injury, and then you're liable for that. So this is where something like a few of these on some stands, well look, the tripod on something like this is almost ineffectual. It's only a tiny little tripod, as I'm sure you can see. It doesn't take up a lot of space or room. The thing weighs next to nothing as a kit like that, and then you're still getting your directional soft light. So I'd recommend something like that when you're in a confined space. Uh, if you've got plenty of room in your studio, well, the softboxes are awesome because they power all the time. You never have to worry about things like 
then batteries going low or you know dropping out at the most crucial time when you needed that perfect shot especially if you're photographing say children for example you might only get that split second where they're all smiling and calm at the same time you don't want to worry about batteries dying on you at a crucial moment something like this can be excellent and it's a lot less intimidating too these uh, flash systems for photo for example they may work well but it's harsh and sudden and can certainly scare either pets or, or young children so this way you know it's on all the time and it's not intimidating the uh, next step from the uh, softbox that I was just illustrating there if I may just twist around and show you is this big umbrella now this is actually a 5 foot umbrella called 60 inch uh, they're quite excellent when you buy this diffusing type membrane on them because what happens here now is you get the choices of bouncing back on them for example because it still is white it will reflect light but because it's translucent you can actually shoot through it and that gives you a nice beautiful softbox sort of light coming from the other end so it just depends which way you turn it around and how you rig it together you can use a studio beam light through that that's fine fully powered but I prefer actually uh, for photos anyway to use one of these speed lights so let me just illustrate how something like this works in harmony with uh, this item here so what I do is first I need a mount so I've got to remember where I put my mount oh here it is sorry excuse me while I fiddle around just lay that down out of the way I'll just take this little mount off as you see they just unscrew in seconds it's not a big deal what we do here is just clip mine again make sure it's locked in position I should be able to screw that on without needing to get up and that just mounts on that quarter inch thread as you can see it doesn't take long it's not particularly difficult to put together just make sure that when you have it it is firmly in place and it is locked on because the last thing you want is that thing to fall off so how do I shoot from that angle? Well you simply twist them around. That's the beauty of these speed lights. You buy a good one. It's uh, fully versatile and comes in every direction you could want it to. I'm just going to now power this onto the remote mode now. And now by firing it by the use of this camera. Uh, this is in master mode. So I should have no trouble taking the shot. Just for the illustration purposes. Uh, I could put the Gary Fong Puffer Plus on. You could use that as a soft directional light as well in harmony with this. This could now be coming from the side and give a beautiful glow over the subjects from one direction. So just to illustrate how that works. So you can see it there bouncing off. Puffer Plus went as well. But you don't need to use this. You can buy remote kits to go onto your camera so you don't have to use the uh, flash in any way. They're actually a great asset. But I tend to not use them where possible because it's just another piece of equipment. I've got a maintenance and remember to carry with me. But that's personally up to your preference. So the umbrellas are excellent. Speed lights are awesome. You get heaps of different options when you've got them. And all your lighting needs are definitely met. With, uh, I reckon with just one speed light and a few diffuser apparatus like this for versatility. You know, that's really anybody really needs. Unless you're in a studio environment, you're going to make a really elaborate lighting setup and surround someone with light. And there's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. Uh, another portable option that I've found very excellent and uh, shouldn't be underestimated because, again, you know, I'm, I'm into this idea of being able to kill two birds with one stone, have something that's versatile and flexible. That way you're not wasting money on a, a, something that's only usable for one particular function. And uh, that is these little LED lights. Now, just because they're small, don't be uh, fooled into assuming that because they're small, they're weak and they're useless. They certainly are most not. Let me just turn them on to illustrate the uh, strength of the light on these things here. And this is two very small LED panels, there are 196, I think, uh, LEDs in these. Uh, they're made from the Aperture Company, and uh, they're a brilliant little unit. Now you notice I've got this stand, it makes it quite versatile. It's a very light tripod, doesn't need to be anymore because they weigh next to nothing. But here as I flex them around, you can see the multitude of different uses you can have. You know, all the different positions that you could tilt them into. Certainly excellent for things like product photography. I mean, you can imagine here that I'm taking a... a a photo of this you can see how this would give a glorious illumination and it's got an infinite amount of you know versatility in adjusting that to get the lighting exactly where you want it so if you had a couple of these you had a speed light on as well but it's a very compact uh, and easy to store system for all sorts of lighting needs but it doesn't end there the fascinating thing about these is a you can tone them down to any level of light you like which is extremely handy if you're only using it for a fill light but here's an interesting sort of aspect to them as well. You can actually take them off, supposedly. Let me just try and get one of these off. I put them on so tight so they wouldn't fall off. I'm having a hard time getting them off. But here we go. I've got them on here. I've got them off here now. Uh, they are portable. You could put them on like a monopod if you wanted to. Use them as a stick to get the light anywhere you like. Uh, but also, you can use them on your camera. So 
So you're having these little uh, modest little ball heads that come with them. That means that the versatility is you can just put them on top of your camera and now you can use that as a portable light anywhere you want it. So how would that work? Well, if I want to take a, a photo, here we go. And you can take your photo and you've got the light directional, just like a speed light if you like. But better than a pop-up flash, it's a bit more versatile. You can turn it down, of course, so it's not scaring or so harsh. Uh, also, the other advantage of something like this is you can buy multiple of them and they're not expensive. See, any sort of a speed light arrangement, you buy one of those up here. These things are worth about, you know, say three to five hundred dollars a piece. It's quite pricey. These LEDs, uh, for example, I think these are about a hundred dollars with the ball head for mounting. And so that gives you great options, value for money wise. Just think about it. You could have, say, four of these for the price of one speed light. Now, how, hand, how handy would that be? Imagine placing them all around for product photography, or if you've got a family you're taking photos of, make sure everybody's got illumination, and you can, of course, you can adjust them. He needs a lot of light, she does not, and so that's quite versatile and affordable. So, yeah, I'm loving these things. I think these LEDs are a brilliant investment. I certainly will probably be buying a lot more. I want one very large one as well for portability. I'll get that as well. So I'm finding that I've got a lot of versatility here. I'm sure you'll find something that I've been showing you that's useful to you. Of course, I'm cheating a little bit today. Not only am I using some uh, soft boxes for fill light, but I've got the natural light sort of diffused coming through some roof panels. Uh, and so that's sort of helping me out today. But I just want to show you that don't be scared to use natural light. I am using natural light. That's why I'm filming outside to show you that. It can be still functional if you can diffuse it. This big uh, umbrella, for example, I can't illustrate it right now because I'm in a confined space, but uh, you can take this off, mount it to um, a monopod using one of these adapters, and then what you can do is use it for the sunshade. So if you're outside taking a photo, uh, your subject is having a bit of harsh, direct sunlight on their face. You know how that can look? It can look like a lunar eclipse on them. You can have half of their face bright white with the sun, the other half's black and shaded, and so the, that image looks terrible, really. You want to sort of soften and diffuse that all over. Using the umbrella from the direction of the sun, you can soften it above them and therefore you get a beautiful soft glow going right over the whole face. So there's nothing that's harsh and nothing that's dark. So that's another aspect of getting one of these soft white um, umbrella styles so that you can use them in multi-different functions. So I hope they've given you some ideas, some tips and tricks that might be useful to you. I mean, you can start off as simple as one of these just on your pop-up flash for any expense and portability, but uh, you know, certainly there's a myriad of options out there. Please spend your time investigating them online and I'm sure you'll find the perfect one for you.